portray to us this morning in the gospel text. That text is drawn from a larger text of John's gospel chapter 10, talking about Jesus as the shepherd. And it says, anyone who enters the sheepfold, who does not enter through the door, is a what? Thief. But the person who passes through the door is the shepherd. And sorry, can somebody put up that microphone in the choir or where that breeze is blowing, please? And it says that the person who enters through the door know the sheep and the sheep do what? And when he speaks, what is the reaction of the sheep? They listen. When he calls, they do what? They follow. But the other person who jumps in, the sheep will do what? Run away from what? From him or from her. Because he's a thief. And one who is a thief does not fulfill the functions of the shepherd. One of those functions of the shepherd is that he leads. He guides. He protects, he provides, he, he cares, and he sacrifices even his own life. Those were some of the characters or characteristics or attributes of the shepherds in the time of Jesus and even to now. A shepherd ordinarily, in fact, shepherding is from the beginning. In God's plan. That's why in Genesis chapter 1. After the creation. And when God created Adam and Eve. The scripture tells us. That God came. Precisely in chapter 3 of Genesis. He says God came. Calling Adam. Adam where are you? And Adam heard the voice of God. And he hid. That action of God. Of coming back. To look for Adam and Eve is the shepherd's word acts watching over because the shepherd is a watchman and so God came back to watch over those he had created because he has a fellowship with them and so he returned probably call it coming into the sheep food to look for the to look for the sheep to call them out for dialogue, for interaction, for discussion, for communion, so that they can flow together. But on arrival, what did he discover? That man had disobeyed. That man's eyes were opened and he had known the good and the what? The bad. And the act of shepherding imputes dominion care and victory over everything. That's why when he created man, he said go and do what? Multiply. And then he said, take charge of all the animals that I have what? Created. And then he said, subdue the earth. Till it and walk on it. Praise the Lord. Does the shepherd do all those? Some of us might not be familiar with shepherding, but when it comes to business, we are good at that. Put it within the context of your business, you then discover that that is the same thing you do in business. For you to excel in business, what do you do? You guard over your business. You shepherd your business. You take stock. Because in that, you care. If you don't care, your boys will do what? They will do what? And when they steal from you, what happens? Your business will do what? So shepherding is not only when you lead sheep and goats. Again, one of those characteristics of the sheep is that the sheep must always be led. Because on their own, they are not so sensible. They must be led, directed, and guided. 
Otherwise, they will stray. And when they stray, they perish. Or when they stray, they go to the wrong place and eat the wrong food. And they do what? Die. Praise the Lord. When I was a growing child, I have a very good experience of it. Because my father used to be an agricultural person. And he had this native cow, Efi. Plenty of it. You see me and my brothers, we just lead them out. Sometimes we'll come close and we'll make a particular sound. You stretch your hand and they will lick your hand with salt. Then you touch their head. They will just stay because they know you. And as you come, they will do. They are smelling you. And they know that it is you. They follow you. So that care, they will give it to you because they identify with you. When once you approach, they will do that sound, smelling. When once they don't know you, they will do what? They will ship back. And so that's the kind of picture that Jesus paints for us today. You must have that knowledge of the person. And that's why a story was told of one lady named Laura. Laura lived in an apartment. And then all of a sudden the news broke out. That someone came to Laura's house and shot her dead and left. So a detective was sent to her house to find out how she died. And so the man arrived in Laura's house and stayed in that house going through every document, every written document, going through the clothes, going through every detail in the house in order to find out who killed her. Not in this part of our world where they don't walk. And so the man practically stayed in the house and was staying there. And as he stayed there reading through the diaries and so many other activities of the house, he fell in love with Laura who had died, who was supposedly dead. And so one day he sat in the house and was going through in the night, all of a sudden the key to the house turned. And then the door opened and somebody showed up. And then he asked, who are you? The person said, I am Laura. And L Laura asked him, what are you doing in my house? Now, Laura had gone on a holiday to the outskirts of the city. There was a woman she left in her house or who was using her house while she was away. That was the person that was shot by the person who came in. And so... Laura then asked, her, asked him what he was doing in her house. He said, but you are supposed to be dead. He said, no, I'm not dead. I'm alive. And then, because where she went, there was no means of communication. She could not get the news that somebody had killed Susu so person in Susu so -so apartment and all that. And so the interaction between her and the man, the detective started. Now, first, before she arrived, the detective had known so much about her. And on arrival, somehow, they began to relate. And from that, at the end of the day, the detective ended up in Marin Laura, and they lived a happy life. Reason being, he knew Laura. And then they began to stay together. That knowledge enabled him to fall in love, and then they became husband and wife, and they lived a happy life difference. That is the picture that is presented to us today. From time, God in eternity came into the world. And when he came through knowledge of him, he expects, or God expects that we have a knowledge of him, and that is in Jesus. Such that through that knowledge of him, then we fall in love with him, we obey him, we worship him, we adore him. And he rewards us as the second reading today in the book of Apocalypse tells us that eventually he will lead us to eternal life. He will give us the gift of eternal life through this knowledge of him. That is supposed to be the relationship between us and God as his sons and as his daughters. 
Dear friends, the shepherds of old cared for the sheep because they had knowledge of the sheep. And the sheep followed them and obeyed because they had knowledge of their master. And because of that, they led them. And wherever they led them, they followed. They guided and protected them. That's why in Psalm 23, when David had to talk about his staff and his crook with which he defended them. Again, in the Arab world, the function of the shepherd was something that was delegated to the last child of the house. That's why in 1 Samuel chapter 16, when Samuel went to the house of Jesse to announce, anoint David as king, precisely in verse 11 of that text of scripture, it is said that when Jesse had presented all his children, Samuel said to him, Is there no other one? He said in verse 11, Except the youngest of them. And he said, Where is he? He said, He was out there in the field shepherding the word sheep. Then he said, Send for him. We shall not sit down to eat until he arrives. That function was given to the youngest of the house because then they did not have so much energy to follow the parents to walk in the fields. Those who were shepherds amongst the Jewish people or among the Arabs were people also who were farmers. And so this job of shepherding is delegated to the younger child and there is a transmission. If the first son was the shepherd of the sheep at that particular point in time, when he grows older, he joins the father in the farm and delegates that function to the younger one. And that was why it got to David at that point. Sometimes if you go on the road,